Good morning, I'm Janet Durden, President of the United Way of Northeast Louisiana. Congratulations to all our award winners. It's my great honor and privilege to introduce to you our very special guest, Demario Davis, New Orleans Saints linebacker. On the field, this Brandon, Mississippi native is one of the most consistent linebackers in the NFL, having been named to the All-Pro team in 2019. But off the field, his passion for service, volunteerism, and philanthropy have truly distinguished him. The Saints named him their 2020 Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee, and he received the very distinguished 2020 Bart Starr Award, which is given for character and leadership on and off the field. Demario, we are so excited and thrilled that you accepted our invitation to speak today because we really value and respect the passion of your personal passions and the platforms that you stand for, many of which mirror the work we're doing here in the United Way of Northeast Louisiana. Please help me welcome Demario Davis. Well, thank you, Janet. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for all the supporters, uh, donors um, of United Way. Um, thank you for everyone that's involved in this. Um, definitely looking forward to it. Excited to be here. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's really uh, great to get to ask you a few questions that we'd all be interested in. Our United Way is very committed to strengthening uh, and making certain that children and youth are successful in life and in school. And we know that you established the Devoted Dreamers Foundation. Why have children and youth been such an important focus for you? Well, I, I, I just firmly believe that the youth are the future. You know, our world will be um, what, what the youth make it in the future. And so it's, we have to prepare a world that's ready to receive them, but we also have to prepare them to take the baton and take our world farther. Um, you know, I always think about my children. I want their, my ceiling to be their floor. But to do that, you know, I have to um, essentially get, create a, a ceiling that they can look up to, but I also have to equip them to be in a position when it's their turn that that, that, that ceiling is their floor. And that's the same way, that's the same mentality I take into the community. Um, when I look back over my childhood, um, though I'm very fortunate to be where I am, um, it was not through, without the lack of adversity, right? And I lost a lot of my my, my peers um, along the way. And that was because it was lack of, lack of access to resources. And so that was a big reason why we started Devoted Dreamers because we wanted to kind of close those gaps, close those cracks that so many kids are, are, are falling between. You know, if a kid doesn't display a certain level of talent um, um, in extracurricular activities or they don't display a certain level of, uh, aptitude in the classroom, they tend to fall between the cracks and which leaves them susceptible so, to so many different things. And, um, you know, I just wanted to be able to use my platform to, to create bridges um, and, and, and not borders. And so create access for those children. And so our kids are, are, are gonna be a, a direct result of the type of access that we give them to opportunities to turn um, their dreams into reality. And that's what we need. We need their dreams to become okay. reality because that's gonna be a better world for us. That's, that's outstanding. We know that you have long had a, a strong voice for social justice. Tell us about your experiences and what we can learn from them. Um, that it's gonna take all of us. That, that to, to really create change, it, it's gonna take all of us. Um, and when you look at what, what is going on so, uh, around our country, a lot of it is plagued by our history and, and just not really addressing addressing things that have gone on in our history, which has allowed things to continue. Um, several spaces that I that I've worked in and, and seen, you know, how black and brown communities are plagued um, in, in criminal justice system. We need criminal justice reform um, in, in policing. We need better relationships between police officers and um, and communities of color. Um, education, we got to be able to close close gaps that exist in the education system, especially around digital divide um, and economic advancement, you know, economic equity. And so how do we create opportunities where um, black and brown communities have access that the same that, that are presented in, in um, um, other communities? And so um, I think closing those gaps, it really, it, it really just requires everybody working together. It, it takes a conscious effort of saying, okay, I see the problem. 
And it's my responsibility as a human being to humanity to help correct something that's um, plaguing any human being, um, regardless of color, regardless of background, regardless of religion, regardless of creed. That's so well said, thank you. Uh, we know that uh, volunteerism is a huge part of your life. And what, what has volunteering meant to you on a personal level? Um, somebody challenged me uh, years ago um, uh, with, these, with these platforms. Um, we were able to, to, to give a large amount of resource, but they challenged and said, you know, you ought to go what you're giving. And I think that was something that uh, stuck and resonated with me. And I believe that to uh, another phrase that, that I heard was, um, you can fake that you care, but you can't fake that you're there. <laughs> and so you have, to, you have to be there. You have to spend time with the people that you want to impact to, to know. So the same in social justice, any area that I've, I've ever tried to have influence in, I've always gone to the ground. So I've gone to the border. I've gone to uh, Flint, Michigan. You know, I've gone to, uh, I walked with the people during, during a lot of the protests and I, I met with those organizations because you don't know unless you're there. That's the only way you're going to be able to hear about the issues that are plaguing the community, how do people feel about it. And uh, sometimes you hear some of the best ideas for solutions on the ground. And, um, you know, the time I, I get to spend with uh, my kids at Devoted Dreamers, um, when they travel to different cities and, 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 and play and participate in different things, I'm right there with them because I learned so much from the kids. Um, and so as much as I'm giving back to them, they're, they're, they're giving to me. And so I, I would always encourage anybody that's that wants to give or wants to, to be a part of something or have impact, you have to go, you have to spend time. That's, that's beautifully said, thank you very much. You know, you won't remember this, but I met you years ago at a United Way Worldwide event where you were uh, the keynote speaker as the United Way brand ambassador when you mm -hmm. were working with the United Way in Jackson, Mississippi. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> that, that's very kind, it was a long time ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, I never forget a face. You're kind. Well, I didn't forget you either for certain. And then the NFL came up with uh, cleats for a cause. And what do you do? You sport the United Way on your shoes. We really do appreciate the support you have given for many years to the United Way. And we'd like you to tell us a little bit about why you value the work that local United Ways are doing. Well, I think United Way has um, a unique position um, to really impact um, society for change in a major way. And it's because of um, how many cities that United Way are located across the globe, um, especially um, in, in, in the country of America. Um, with that type of, that many boots on the ground in so many different locations, um, with the proper network, you, are, you guys are able to have a, a, a type of impact that only people could only hope to, to create. So United Way has resources in places in so many different locations. Um, like I said, it, it, in, in working together as a proper team, the, the capability of impact is just, um, you know, it's, 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 it's uncomparable. Um, and so with, for that reason is, is why I, I, you know, I, I, I could see the opportunity that was there and, and just, you know, wanted to use my platform to help that happen even more so. And then also the United Way has a unique ability of being able to quantify impact and to, to know what type of impact. A lot of people are moving and doing different stuff in different places, but if you're not able to measure it, you can't, you can't, you can't um, show reason to replicate it somewhere else. And I'm a big proponent in that there are a lot of solutions. We don't all need to go and try to create a solution. Um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel if somebody's doing it right. All you have to do is replicate that model in different locations. If it's working, just replicate it. And to only, the only way to know if it's valuable to replicate is you have to be able to quantify the impact. And so I think United Way has the resources and tools um, to do that in, in, in a unique way that you don't see in a lot of different places. And for, that, for those reasons, um, that's why I've always been passionate about United Way and will continue to be. Thank you so much for those kind words about United Way. And thank you for being with us today. I think we could have talked all day. It really does mean a lot to hear, uh, to hear you and understand what you really stand for. We, we love you on the field, but we really, we really do admire you off the field so much. And it's been an honor to have you with us. We wanna thank you for the great work you're doing. And we want to thank you for inspiring all of our listeners today. And as always, go Saints. <laughs> Who that?
Thank you guys. You guys are blessed. Thank you. Thank you.